Hi everyone, back for a Life Monastery uh, video. So today's reflection is that every moment is a moment of practice. And when I hear the term spiritual practice, I usually hear it used as, ah, yes, I pray in the morning, or I journal, uh, or I meditate X number of minutes or hours a day, or I go to retreat, uh, spiritual retreats uh, on a regular basis, or I gather with spiritual people regularly, or I do certain movements or um, rituals that foster my spiritual growth. And those are all helpful, for sure. Um, those are all sort of more intensive uh, exercises for the soul. And yet, I've always thought that spiritual practice never ceases. Or rather, it doesn't ever have to end. Like, okay, I'm done meditating now. It's time to go on with my day. All right. I think that's my prayer for the day. That's my journaling for the day. That's my dancing for the day or, or, or whatever. Okay. Well, what about the rest of your day? Are you now going to no longer be practicing your spirituality? Um, and yes, I understand there is something to be said about, well, it's hard to multitask, George. It's hard to be working uh, and at the same time practicing my spirituality exactly and i think that's why we are here in my opinion in my worldview in my understanding of the meaning of life i think that's why we're here to anchor the light in as many moments as possible to Ground the love, or maybe I should better, better say anchor, anchor the love and ground the light, you know, however you want to say it, in as many moments as possible. To hold the divine to represent God in as many moments as possible. I, so I heard, uh, I've been once again listening to a lot of near-death experiences. I really uh, value them, and I highly encourage you to uh, check out my playlist on Remarkable NDEs. I'll try to remember to put a link below this video. If I don't, please remind me. And one of them said, imagine that God couldn't be here today. Imagine that God couldn't be here today, and they sent you instead. God sent you instead. Couldn't be here. So I got to send you. And that's like such a good <laughs> way of thinking about it. Like you and I are quite literally the representatives or the embodiments of God or the divine or the universe or highest, deepest source consciousness. We are the embodiments here in our lives right now, like in your life at the moment and throughout the rest of your day and throughout the rest of your week. You are the God, Godness that's walking around and doing stuff. And when other people see you and interact with you, do they walk away going, wow, I just interacted with the divine, with an angel, with ultimate light and love, in body form. I wish for that. I yearn for that. I am practicing what that even means in, <laughs> you know, of course, the tiniest way that I can, but it's a good thought. And the other, some, another idea that I heard recently was how this is, again, part of a near-death experience vision, that they saw this rock 
dropping from the sky into an ocean and the rock created ripples that went forever and ever and ever touched the entire ocean. And then the divine said, you are that rock. This was a separate near-death experience, separate, separate person who said this. You are that rock. You have been sent out into this world and you are creating ripples. And that brings me back to, again, the core message of this video. Every moment is a moment of practice. Every moment is a ripple effect moment. You are definitely, every second, you're creating a ripple effect. The question is, what kind of ripple effect are you creating? The ripple effect, you know, is in your own mind. Every thought that you allow to stay for more than a couple seconds, sure, thoughts come in randomly. We might say it's our monkey mind. You might say, some, some of us might say it's spiritual entities influencing us. Some might say it's just the brain, you know, secretions of hormones and electric signals, electrical signals in the brain and media influences and, you know, past conditioning. But thoughts, sure, they come randomly. But whether you choose to allow them to stay once you become aware of them is what creates the ripple effect. If you choose to allow this thought of somebody, um, something negative about that person, and you become aware of that and you choose to indulge in that, that creates a ripple effect. Definitely the next time you interact with that person, that ripple effect will, will be there. You, no matter how nice you try to be to that person, you still have that judgment that will create a subtle subtle difference in your face, facial expression, in your tone of voice, in the words that you use that they will subtly recognize. And so that's true, right? Just, that's a scientific fact of how our thoughts affect the subtleties of our interactions with others. But might there also be some kind of spiritual vibration of our thoughts when we judge somebody, when we are you know, when we, oh yeah, that person is always like this, or that person, yeah, why, you know, that person, I don't like that person because of this reason. Might, might that spiritual vibration be actually holding them down in some way, energetically, according to another NDE that I watched, that I listened to, it's true that our thoughts, our, our positive and negative thoughts actually weigh down other people or lift them up even without interacting with them physically there's some kind of spiritual vibration thing going on that actually creates an energetic uplift or energetic downward uh, energy and then of course our thoughts of ourselves <laughs> the ultimate person we have thoughts about all the time either definitely creates because we're in you know where our thoughts are happening within our own body mind system it's going to definitely create an uplift or a downward trend and so spiritual practice never ceases you are always practicing something either practicing a ripple effect of goodness in your life in your mind and out into the world or you're practicing a ripple effect of some aspect of negativity that's going to ripple out into your mind, body system, and into the world as well. Spiritual practice never ceases. So, so I look at like a lot of therapies, like people go to therapy, you know, maybe even get coaching, and those therapists and coaches don't tell them, you got to practice throughout the day. You can't just come to me once a week or once every two weeks or whatever like going to church once a week and then going home and, you know, you know, being mean to your family or whatever, right? Too many people do that. No, no, no. You have to practice throughout the day. Like 
literally throughout the entire day, not just, yeah, no, no, I have my morning practice, I have my eating practice, oh, I, I say grace in, during lunch, okay, fine, wonderful, good, good to have those miles, mile markers throughout the day, but no, it's like at 10.22 a.m. are you practicing, at 4.13 p.m. are you practicing, not, not that you have to like definitely don't beat yourself up. You're like, oh my God, I haven't practiced in six hours. No, it's not like that. But it's, that's the goal. I mean, it's a very high goal. It's a very high, yeah, it's, it's like being an Olympic athlete. Yeah, we're working our way there. But all of us have been sent here as spiritual Olympic athletes. Again, from some other wisdom from NDEs, like all of us are like, elite jet fighter pilots sent here to this very difficult life uh, as spiritual beings. They're all cheering us on. Like, yeah, you're going to go play Earth? That's a really hard game to play. Are you sure? You're going to go play Earth? All right. I, I'm cheering you on. We're all cheering you on here. We're going to be watching the whole time. And so we're here <laughs> to play Earth. Earth school, Earth life. And the... The goal is to spiritually practice every single second of the day. Now, that's multitasking. It's true. There's, you know, people say, oh, multi multitasking is bad. There's one thing multitasking is good for, spiritual practice. Like every second, am I, am I working on my computer? I suddenly become aware. Okay, I'm not, I haven't thought about spirituality or God or the divine or my breath or my spiritual life for for. for Usually these days, I do my energy reboot like several times an hour. So I'm, I'm starting to work my way, starting to work my way there. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't thought about my spirituality, my spirit in like half an hour. Okay, energy reboot. All right, now the, set the intention again. Is every stroke of the keyboard, every word, every moving around this paper, every, every, you know, oh, put my phone over here. Every movement, every breath, every sight, can I somehow multitask, the only multitasking that's truly worthwhile to bring, to breathe spirit into that moment, that activity, to bring awareness to my thought. Is it rippling effect good or probably rippling effect not so good. My, this video has gone long enough. Thank you for joining me in, in this experience. I hope this has been helpful. I hope this inspires you to practice without ceasing. Thank you.